Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, if you tuned in last Sunday, you would have heard uh, that we initially intended to start a new series on the 10th of January, but it was really on my heart that we stuck with Nehemiah for a little bit longer and discerned what God is doing in us and through us and around us in 2021. So I'm really glad that we did that. Um, but this weekend we're starting our new series, um, Storytime parables of the kingdom and Dave Morgan's going to be kicking that off by starting um, with the parable of the soils and so that's going to be really good but what I wanted to do is I wanted to set the series up I wanted to give us a little bit of insight and understanding as to why parables uh, when you read chapter 13 which is a chapter completely filled with parables uh, the disciples come to Jesus and ask him the all-important question why are you doing this why are you shrouding what you're saying in stories why don't you just speak to the people clearly um, and basically i wanted to answer that question today and look into it a little bit further because i believe in the parables is a great invitation for us um, in the parables there's stories that are at once easily easily to hold and to grasp uh, they're things that we can relate to and understand, but at the same time, the deep spiritual truths that they have for us, you need to go searching for, you need to go after. On one hand, they're completely able to be grasped, and on the other hand, they're quite elusive. And that has everything to do with how we listen uh, and how we hear and whether or not we're soft to God or if we're hard to God, if we have hard hearts and don't want to hear it or we're unteachable or distracted, all sorts of things. So. Let me read to you really quickly, um, chapter 13, verses 10 through to 17. The disciples came to him, that's Jesus, and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? Why are you like this, Jesus? Why all of a sudden? And he replied, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. So already we see that it's given and revealed to some and others haven't heard it or perceived it as such. Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing they do not see, though hearing they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You'll be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. Jesus then turns to his disciples and says to them, but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see, but did not see it and to hear what you hear, but did not hear hear it. And so the stories of the parables are a beautiful invitation to us in this season to dig deep and to pursue and to go after them. Um, the first thing is this idea of atropathy. Um, use it or lose it. You either work a muscle and build it or you don't work it and you lose it. That's what's sort of held out to us at the very beginning of the parable. When they ask, why do you talk like this to the people, Jesus? He starts by saying, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more and whoever does not have, even what he does have, will be taken from him. Now, at a surface reading that sounds incredibly harsh but think about it this way if you've ever learnt a language you know that when you practice it you get better at it but what happens after a time if you don't practice it you don't speak it you lose even what you had and this is basically the dual function of the parables it's not god playing a mean trick going i'm not going to give this to you and i'll give it to others no, the parables are self-revealing. They reveal what's happening in the hearts of people who are hearing. And so they do a lot of telling about our own lives. And this is part of Matthew's really clever design. What he did was a parable actually means to lay one thing beside another. And Matthew laid a whole chapter of parables beside chapter 11 and 12, which were all about people's responses to Jesus. Remember, we talked about some people doubted, 
Uh, other peoples embraced Jesus and his ministry with their whole heart. They learned to follow him. Uh, some were vehemently against him and opposed him. In fact, we finished chapter 12 uh, with the Pharisees attributing Jesus' work to the devil. Uh, they say he's doing it by Beelzebub. And, and so there was all sorts of different responses to Jesus. And now what Matthew does is he gives us a whole bunch of parables and they tell the stories again but uh, in story form. They tell the narrative again, but through these beautiful, involved parables. And to each of us in this season is an opportunity to explore the words of Jesus. And I want to encourage us and warn us, um, for those of us who have grown up in the church, we are incredibly familiar with these. But it's not about just knowing with our heads. It's actually about understanding with our hearts. And while these parables were spoken some 2,000 years ago, their message, their truth, and the kingdom, they're all about the kingdom of heaven, is available to us today. And it's going to be available to those who seek and listen and look and press in. And to those who know it all or are indifferent, well, to them, it's not really available. It's about the disposition of our heart. One commentator puts it this way. He says, a parable is a shell that keeps good fruit for the diligent, but it keeps it from the slothful. And so I got this, um, I got a bag of, of peanuts here. Um, I think these are peanuts, these are peanuts, right? Yeah, they've got this shell. And, and what this uh, author was saying is that um, the parables are a little bit like this. I mean, they're easy enough to grasp, but the good stuff is in the middle. And if you can't be bothered to crack them, if you can't be bothered to lean in and to listen, then you miss it. You miss it. But for the diligent, those who are willing to take the time to, you know, crack it open, pull it apart, look inside, they're going to receive more. To the curious, the doors of the kingdom are always open and they're getting wider and wider and wider. But to those who are indifferent, those who are distracted or too busy, um, the kingdom is, is more or less closed to them. It's not necessarily that God is, you know, pushing people out, but it's telling, it's a revealing. Remember, we must hold this in the context of broader scripture, which is God sent his son so that none shall perish. He wants all to enter into the kingdom. But the parables simultaneously compel us to come close. And for those unwilling to do the work, they push them away. And so Jesus is a masterful storyteller. And, and it even reminds me, when Jesus is telling his first parable, hear this, it says the same day. So the same day that people have been accusing Jesus that he does miracles by the power of the devil. And the same day that he says, you know, to the people in the house, these are my mothers and brothers and sisters, a big crowd gathers around him. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and he sat by the lake. It says that such a crowd gathered around him that he got up into a boat and he sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. And then he told them many things in parables and he goes on to speak. And that picture there is actually a really good embodiment of what the parables are like. Jesus gets on a boat and he just heads out just a little bit offshore. It's like a natural amphitheater. And he begins to speak to the people these amazing stories that at once are relatable and at another time deep and powerful. And in this picture, Jesus stands just off the shore. People can hear him. He's close enough to be heard but also just at bay from everybody, right? And that's what the parable is like. It's, it's able to be grasped. It's right there and easy to be heard. But at the same time, he's just a little bit away. It's this playful uh, thing that reveals what's happening in people's hearts. And so Jesus is available and the kingdom of heaven is available to those who would pick up the parable and crack it open and explore the kingdom of heaven is also available to those who would dive in and swim. I actually was thinking about this, that this week. I'm sure it happened from time to time when Jesus preaches just off the shore. People who are desperate and desiring him and want him. I can imagine that some of them must have dove into the water and gone out to him just for a touch, just to be close to him. It's a tremendous thought and the parables are just like that. Those who have the desire to seek, the desire to listen, to dive in, to swim, to crack open the exterior and to explore, to those will be given more. 
but those who stand with arms crossed at a distance on the shore, who, who look and go, nah, I'd rather not, not super keen on, a, on the peanut thing. Well, even what they have will be taken away. And the parables talk repeatedly about that. The other thing is in this parable, it's incredibly important how we listen. Hear this. Though seeing they do not see, though hearing they do not hear or understand, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6. It says, you will be ever hearing but never understanding, you'll be ever seeing but never perceiving, for this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and I would hear them, heal them. Do you see that actually what has happened in the hearts of people who were despondent is that their hearts were already hard. They'd made a decision. They'd made a decision about Jesus. Their hearts were hard, their ears were closed, their eyes were shut. And so the parable reveals that because they're unwilling to dig. But there's also a really important warning in here for us. It's really important how we listen. I remember Beth rebuked me once. <laughs> she, I mean, we were talking like we always are, and she knows, she does this all the time. She can tell when I'm there. There's a difference between being there and truly being present to someone. And uh, we're talking and we're talking, and I mean, she's doing the talking on this occasion. And she can tell that at some point I've glazed over, I've disappeared. And I remember her saying to me, this is many years ago, she said, there's a difference between hearing and listening. How true is that? We can hear something and it can be in one ear and out the other. In fact, we can hear something, we can even recite it, we can teach it to others. But there's a difference when we truly listen and we allow something to rest in us and on us. And the parables present us with that opportunity. Um, they present us with an opportunity to truly lean in ask questions and listen. I remember um, 2011, 10 years ago, I would have been 20, 21 years old, I went on a ministry trip with uh, Pastor Ian and my good mate Toby Fenn and we got to see so many uh, amazing miracles happen. Um, we got to minister to lots of people and lots of words and just cool stuff. It was really exciting to do that um, at, at a young age and to go with the pastor and do something cool. Um, but what I remember is this, after all the ministry would happen and we'd go on our daily adventures, and all these different kinds of things. Um, after that would happen, late in the evenings, what would often happen were these, um, these talks and these chats, these debriefs. And Ian would ask us, you know, what did you think about this? And what did you think about that? And what happened today? And did God speak to you in anything? And actually, these became the moments of gold in the trip. The ministry was great. The teaching was great. These things were awesome. But really, all the action happened in the after hours when we made sense of it. And when you read the parables in chapter 13, you'll see that Jesus speaks to the crowds in parables. But then there's these couple moments where he speaks after hours to his disciples. And they're the ones that get more and more, the ones that are willing to draw in, to go close, to crack open, to dive deep, and to be present to Jesus. They're the ones who get more and more and more, and the kingdom is ever opening to them. And so I wanna encourage us in this series to do exactly the same thing, to dig deep. We will have heard these words probably many times before. We're gonna be familiar with them, there's a world of distraction all around us, but there's an opportunity in the parables. And that is, if we listen, if our eyes are wide open in wonder, if we draw near, if we ask questions, if we open our hearts and we actually uh, ponder on their applications in our lives, then the kingdom is ever opening. But there's also a warning. Let's not, you know, close our ears. Let's not close our eyes. Let's not you know, be superficial in our hearing. Let's keep our eyes open, our ears attentive, and our hearts soft to Jesus' kingdom parables. Um, I'll finish with this, a promise from Jesus. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For whoever asks receives, whoever seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. I want to encourage you in this series, dig deep, dive, crack open and go for it. 
God is speaking to us. And the parables are an invitation, but also be open to the message that perhaps sometimes we're not as soft as we think. They're going to challenge us. So I'm really looking forward to this series. Bless you guys. I hope that helps with a little bit of context. I look forward to it. Dave Morgan is going to smash it this weekend. Awesome. Love you guys so much. Talk very, very soon. Bye.